Hi, good morning, and we have a short tutorial video about patron category types um, today. So we're going to head over to our Koha administration area where the patron category types are created and customized per library. So under Koha administration, under patrons and circulation, we have patron categories. This will show you every patron category in their code um, within your system. Now it looks like we have most of the, the categories created already, but there are ways to edit what um, it exists in here at this moment. So we'll just pop over to maybe a Bristol community alumni. Okay, Jesse. Okay, so this is this all takes place during your migration. This is set up and we go through and set the um, required fields up and all of the preferences within them. So let's go through each one. So you have a category code and you have a description. The best part we can explain where this comes is into play is when you're running reports. Um, that category code will always be the code that identifies what the category is. Now, when you see that description, you're gonna see the description when you're hitting the drop down menu to create a patron and things like that. So the description is gonna be way more identifiable, but that code is what's going to um, help you when you're running reports. The next thing we have here is enrollment period. There's two ways in Koha to do this, either by months or an until date. Um, it looks like most of yours in the system for Helm right now are in months, which is 999. So that gives them an unlimited time for um, them to be in the system. Now, in another series, we'll talk about patron cleanup and things like that. So you don't have to worry about them being in there forever. The next two you'll see here are age required and upper age limit. Now, a lot of times this comes more into play um, within a public library where, you know, you'll have a patron that they are an, a child and then they become an adult, you know, at 16 or 18, whatever your public library decides. So most of the time that's going to be um, an example like that. Now, for your libraries that may have a community user, um, you know, and you only allow adults or children over the age of 16, that could be an option for you in here. You would need to make sure you're collecting the date of birth for those patrons so we know how old they are in Koha. Absolutely. Um, the next thing you see here is enrollment fee. Now, obviously this probably wouldn't be for your regular students or faculty or employees. Um, sometimes libraries will have like um, out of county or maybe a community user or um, another type of user where they do have a annual fee. Um, and that would be where you could place this and then Koha would charge them that um, annual fee in the system. Now, you can identify what patron category types receive an overdue notice. So here is where you would say yes or no, that they would be able to be set up in the overdue notice status and triggers. Next, you have lost items and staff client, whether you show lost items to this patron category or hide, that is one of those options here. If there is a hold fee, so if this patron category needs to be charged a hold fee when they place something on hold, you would set it up at the patron category level. Category types. This is where you identify what type of patron category this is. Most of your patron categories will be adult, but you also have child, which Jesse was talking about with date, date of birth, making them a child until a certain date that adult and child can actually have a guarantor and guarantee relationship so you can link them. Currently in Koha, you would need to have an adult and a child to make that linkage happen. You also have staff. Um, organizational could be, and professional are both ways to, uh, again, link um, people to organizations. I know a lot of libraries will use organization as a category type when they're setting up their interlibrary loan libraries. Yep. One of the advantages is you don't have a first name when you set it up. It truly is just the name of the organization. And then you have statistical patron. So if you were doing your in-house use that you wanted to, to grab that statistical information, you create a stat statistical patron and then just check out items that didn't circulate but were used during um, the library. 
Kelly, can I jump in here? I always like to point this one out and a lot of people forget about it is that professional one. And if you create an organization, you can have professionals attached to the organization. So in the case where maybe you um, have a nursing program or let's say a um, an educational program and you want to link to like, let's say a hospital or um, another facility, you can have, as Kelly mentioned, that organization, which would just have a name, but then you can have actual individuals marked as professionals connected to them. So if you ever wanted to create something like that, that's a good way to track them. Yeah, that's a great example. Great example. You can put limitations to this category to say only um, this library uses this patron category type. So only people logged into the Bristol Community College can have access to adding a Bristol Community College alumni. Okay, so we, then we have some more options down here. This is really expanded. So if you want to allow this patron category to reset their password in the OPAC, this can be turned on, or you can say, look at the system preference that is set up. This was put in place because a lot of um, academics have students that they do not want to change their password, but then again, your community users, you want to allow them to for, have a password reset. So now you have some options at the category level, whether they can change their re password resets or um, they're not allowed. I said and, password and reset and password change, same, yeah. Same, yep. Um, block expired patrons. This one will identify whether this category is blocked in the OPEC, like for example, when they're placing holds or renewing holds, um, you know, or renewing items that they may have checked out and their card has expired. Um, so that option, if you hit the drop down, that'll just look at um, the system preference that's set, or you can say block or don't block. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Now we have default privacy. Now there's three options you can choose here. Let's go over the easiest first. You have never. That means it will anonymize your patron data. The statistic will still be, you know, the transaction statistic will still be maintained. It will just anonymize the patron's account information. The other option is forever. That means it will retain the information in the system. The patron can view their checkouts if you allow them. There's a system preference that you can turn on so staff can view it. Um, you know, that can be turned on or off. And so that would be the option if forever was kept. Then you have a third option and that is default. If default is set, you can have a set period of days that it will save in the system. For example, um, sometimes libraries will say 365. That'll give it a 365 day rolling um, like option to save the account information of that patron. So for 365, for 365 days, I can see what I've checked out in the system. So these are three different options that your library can choose when setting this up. Yeah, great, perfect. Um, and then finally, we have messaging preferences for this patron category, and this is by default. So anytime a new patron type category of Bristol Community College alumni, when they are created, you could pick the default messages that are, are already checked upon creation of that patron. Saves you some time. It's an automatic setting them up to say, you probably say, well, let's give them that three-day advance notice and let them know for holds. After that, the staff can, can always go in and add more or take away messages that per the patron's desire. But right now, this is that default messaging preference to say every time a new patron is created within this category, these will be checked to be able to be sent. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. That wraps us up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.